Hey everybody, hey Cardware here, and in this video we are going to install Caddy. Now I've recently switched from Nginx Proxy Manager to Caddy because I want to use as many pure LXC as I can with Proxbox. And NPM, you kind of have to use Docker. You can install it directly on LXC, and I have a video for that. So if you really want to use NPM, you can do it. It's just you're probably either going to have to install Docker within an LXC, run Docker within a VM, VM, or do it kind of the weird way of converting the Docker file system to be run directly on an LXC, which just seemed like a lot of work when Caddy exists. And Caddy can do basically everything that NPM can do. In fact, I find it a little bit easier now that I've dove into it a little bit and learned a little bit about it. So I highly recommend using Caddy if you want to have a reverse proxy that can do a DNS challenge uh, and just run it purely on an LXC. So the two ways that I use Caddy, and there's, it does a lot more than this, but this is just the two ways that I use it. I use it as a reverse proxy. So instead of having to type in my IP address for my service, I can just use a domain name that I actually purchased on Cloudflare and get an actual SSL certificate through DNS challenge. And you have to do a, a one extra step for the DNS challenge that doesn't come out of the box with Caddy. You have to get a new binary that's built for using the DNS challenge, but it comes from the official uh, website. So it's pretty trusted. So the prerequisites uh, for this, we're using Proxmox VE9, probably works on 8.2. Uh, you need to be able to SSH into your Proxmox host. You need to have a static IP address available for Caddy. I'm going to be using 192.168.10.103. You need to know your network gateway IP address. And I'm going to be using DNS Challenge with Cloudflare specifically. So you need to get your Cloudflare API token. I'll show you. Yeah, I should be able to show you where to get this. And then PyHole uh, is should be installed if we're going to use um, like the reverse proxy because, or at least you need to be able to enter in like a local DNS record. Uh, or I guess you could do it locally as well. There's multiple ways where you can basically um, allow for the local DNS record for your domain to point to the correct. Well, it's going to be pointing to Caddy, and then uh, Caddy will be a reverse proxy for the actual service that you have. I'm terrible at explaining like networking things, so hopefully that made sense. Um, okay, so network configuration, I kind of touched on it briefly. For me, it's going to be uh, 192.168.10.103. It needs to be an unused static IP address, and then my gateway is going to be 192.168.10.1. And my subnet mask is slash 24. And uh, what we have is on the right hand side here, I have Termius up, which is my SSH manager. I've already SSH'd into Proxmox. And then on the left hand side, I have Obsidian, which is my note taking app. And um, we're just going to be following that. I'm actually going to upload this to Substack, and a link to the Substack guide will be in the description of the video. So the first thing I usually do is just make sure I have my templates up to date. So we'll run PVEAM update. And then this is just a shorthand command to get the Debian templates. So we could do Debian 12 or Debian 13. We're going to be running Debian 13. And I already have it downloaded, but if you need to download it, you would just replace this with whichever one you want to download over on the right-hand side here. And then we can create the container. So what we're basically doing here is uh, my container ID will be 103. I mentioned that earlier. And, and well, actually, I didn't mention that earlier. But if you've noticed, uh, 103 is going to be the container ID, but it's also the IP address that I'm going to be using for the container. It's just a way to make things a little bit easier and predictable. If I'm trying to remember an IP address for a service, if I have the container ID, I know what the IP address is going to be. We're going to use 512 megabytes of RAM. Just a single core, um, four gigabytes of space on the local LVM, net zero for static IP. It's going to be an unprivileged container. We want it to auto start on boot. 
and it's going to start immediately after I create it. So let's just copy this, we'll paste it in here, get that ready to go. Okay. Now we can check the status by just doing PCT status 103. So the container ID, we can see it's running. So we can do PCT enter 103. And now we are inside this container and we can start getting things set up. Now, one of the first things I do is set up the locales. Uh, this is just like a command here to get them generated. You get a few errors and it's kind of like annoying or warnings. So it's good to just get those set up. You can change obviously the uh, language here if you need to. Then we'll do some updates. And then we'll install the required packages here. Next we'll download the caddy gpg key. And we'll create the sources file so that we can install through apt. Just paste that in there. Control X, Y, enter to save. Set the permissions for that and for the key. And then we'll do app update to get the latest packages from that source. And then we can just do, oh, that was weird. Uh, then we'll just apt install caddy. Now at this point, it's basically installed and running, but there's, of course, some setup. So we're going to do, uh, actually, we could double check to make sure this is working. And what we can do is, let me hide these things. Oop, actually, I wanted to keep the browser up. And you can just verify it's working if you go to a browser on your network and put in the IP address. So mine was 192.168.10.103. And we can see it's super bright, but we do have our caddy file up and it is working. So we can just um, make that go away because it's super bright. And we'll set up the DNS challenge. So uh, actually I'll bring up my browser again because I'm probably, I should be able to show you, I'm gonna expose my API token but I'm also just going to delete that token before I post this video. So you want to, of course, never expose an API token to the internet. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to do it anyway. So let's bring that up. I'm going to go to Cloudflare. And I always have, like I used to forget what I'm supposed to, where I'm supposed to go to get my API token because it's kind of in a weird spot. Uh, if you go up to your, oh, I'm not showing the browser. There we go. Okay, so I'm logged into Cloudflare. Um, I have this hake.rodeo domain, which is what I'm going to be uh, using for my internal server here, or my internal home lab. I don't expose anything to the internet. I know some people have certain things they want to expose outside of the internet. For my guides, I, n I never have anything exposed uh, to the internet. If I do want to get into my network outside of my local internet, I will VPN in. So we'll do profile, and then on the left-hand side, API tokens, and we'll actually delete this one, because I don't need it anymore, and we're going to do create token. And let me just make sure this is big enough here. And then for edit zone DNS, which you're going to want, you're going to use that template. Down for zone resources, you're going to select the domain, and I purchased this domain through Cloudflare, it was super cheap, like a dollar, a couple dollars, that's why I chose Rodeo, because it was the cheapest domain. Uh, so we'll select that one, and then we'll do continue to summary, and then create token. And this is going to be my API token, you can try and use it if you want, but it's going to be deleted uh, before posting this video. And then we can go back in here, and you're just going to want to actually, I'll go back and save that again, or copy that when I need it. Uh, but what we're going to do is get the, first we're going to get the custom binary, and you can see we're downloading this from caddyserver.com, so it's the official build server, and we're just going to curl this. Okay, and then we want to stop caddy because it is running, and then we're going to do our, the 
the caddy file that we just downloaded, or the caddy binary that we just downloaded, we're going to make that executable. And then we're going to overwrite the existing one. And then we're going to restart our service here. And we want to do this before we do all the configuration stuff. OK, and then we want to set up our Cloudflare token. So we're going to create this uh, Etsy caddy.env file. And we're going to paste in our environmental variable. Let me just bring my browser back up so I can copy that token. I'm just going to paste the token here. And then Control X, Y to enter or to save. And then uh, we're going to set the permissions for this ENV file. And this will be referenced in our service. So we actually have to do uh, system CTL edit caddy. So we're editing the caddy service. Now this is, I messed this up the first time I did this because I didn't read, but anything between here and the comment below will become the contents basically of like the service. So anything below will be discarded. And I put mine like way down at the bottom here. So you need to put, and it's kind of interesting, the cursor automatically appears in the correct spot. So what we're going to do is add this service, and then we're going to be specifying the environmental file here. So that's actually all you need to input, and this will automatically update. So we'll do Control X, Y, Enter, and we can see successfully installed, edited file. Okay. Um, next, we want to open up the caddy file. And this is where we're actually going to set our DNS challenge. And we're going to do a global, um, I don't know what the correct terminology is for it, but it's basically we're globally setting our um, SSL certificate for all of the domains that we specify in our caddy file. So we're going to do it way up at the top here, give myself a little bit of space. And we're going to be doing Cloudflare because that is the, when we downloaded this file up here, you can see it says uh, Cloudflare. So we're going to be doing um, that's the specific one that you want to download. If you have a different domain, I'm not sure what services are um, possible. I just always have done Cloudflare because it's the easiest one to do in my mind. So what we're going to be doing is basically just adding this Acme, Acme DNS Cloudflare. This is the DNS challenge basically to get to the certificate and then below it, I usually, I don't know like if, if it matters where you put this stuff. I usually have just put it right below here. And I don't actually have this dashboard. It's just an example if you were going to have two. Uh, but I only have one. We're going to do pihole.hake.rodeo. And it's going to point to my, this is my IP address of my pihole service. And port 80, it's, uh, you know, depending on the service that you're using, you're going to want to uh, use the right uh, port for that uh, service on whatever IP address it is. So for Pi-hole, it's just port 80. And then uh, we'll do Control X, Y, Enter to save. And then we're going to reload uh, everything here with uh, our services with System CTL Daemon Reload. And then we're going to restart Caddy. Now. That was quick. We went through a lot, but it should actually be good to go. So if I bring up my browser again, I should be able to go to pihole.hake.rodeo. And I have to do slash admin because, um, oh, and you know what? One thing that I didn't show is, so at this point, you would need to add a local DNS entry that points to caddy. So let me bring up, I planned poorly for this. Let me add a new window here. Uh, I'm gonna do notepad. And we can see I have 192.168.10.103. It points to pihole.hake.rodeo or the opposite. When I put in this domain in my browser, it's going to go to caddy, and then caddy will act as a reverse proxy for my actual pie hole uh, service. So I should be able to, because I set this, and you can do this locally, like within Linux, your Linux host or your Windows host, 
you can do this at the router. Um, and it just kind of depends on um, if you want it to be for just one computer or if you do it at the router, it's for like every computer. Um, I actually have like a VLAN set up and I have PyHole running just on that VLAN. So if I'm on that VLAN, this works. If I'm not on the VLAN, it doesn't work. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me just remove that. And we'll press enter and we can see PyHole is up and running exactly how I would need it to. So I could log in if I wanted to. And this is not in use really. It's just kind of for the video, but um, yeah, everything is working as it should. So I can go in and add the IP and port for all of the different services on my network that I want to use. And you can, you notice that we are uh, HTTPS and it accepted our certificate. So that's the beauty of using the DNS challenge is that you actually get a real certificate. You don't have to open up any ports or expose anything to the public internet. Uh, it works just fine by using that API key uh, and Cloudflare. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, I honestly have heard of Caddy for a long time. I know tons of people use it. I'm like super late to the party, but I honestly like Caddy way better than Nginx Proxy Manager. Not even just because with NPM you have to run it in Docker, which is kind of a pain, um, but it's just super lightweight, super easy to install just with, you know, like an apt install caddy, which is great. The DNS challenge is a little bit extra work, but it's really not too difficult. Uh, overall, like super easy, highly recommend it. That's going to be the end of this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Uh, I'm still thinking about doing a video on getting Docker installed in LXC. You can actually just use the helper script and get it installed like in one click, but I I'm trying to stay away from helper scripts because I just want to do all this stuff manually uh, just to learn and get a better understanding of how everything is set up. But I just, every time I run Docker in an LXC, it just feels dirty. So I'm going to see how long I can go without having to have Docker uh, installed inside an LXC. And I'm trying to do only LXC or a VM with like very specific reasons why I would choose like a VM. Uh, like for Home Assistant OS, I think I need a VM because it's like an operating system. I don't know if I can install it. I don't think I can just install it in LXC. I know they have other things for Home Assistant that you could put in LXC, but I want to probably do like the full OS. So anyway, I'm going down a rabbit hole here. There's going to be tons of videos. We're going to cover Home Assistant. We're going to cover full media stack with the R stack, um, Jellyfin, Qubit Torrent everything. It's going to be crazy. So like, subscribe. There's tons more videos coming and I'll see you in the next one.